So Jamie, what do we call something that might once been true, but no longer is? Uh, a myth. And what do we like to do to myths? Uh, we bust them, Adam. We bust them good. Yeah, real good. Uh, what myth are we busting up today? Actually, in today's episode, we're going to go up against four myths that persist about Google AMP. These four myths need to die. Here's why. Eric, you've been investing a lot of time into keeping up with the latest developments in Google's AMP program. But first off, briefly explain what AMP is. Sure, Mark. AMP, which stands for Accelerated Mobile Pages, is a program that was originally sponsored by Google, but now is an open source program with a lot of different participants. And what it does is it uses a simplified version of coding pages, uh, and also participants in the program can also cache those pages uh, on their own servers. And the end result is that users end up with web pages that load lightning fast on their mobile devices. And one of the things you've found is that despite huge changes and updates to AMP, several myths about it persist. Now, what are some things that might have been true about AMP at one time but no longer are? The first myth is that AMP doesn't support very many ad platforms. It's true that in the beginning there were some really pretty significant limitations in AMP that kept out some networks and ad formats. But now a great many more ad platforms support AMP. And there are workarounds for things like interactive ads, such as serving them up in an AMP iframe. So what's another myth you can bust? Well, early on, many people noticed that it was hard to get accurate analytics for AMP, largely because someone viewing AMP content was getting it from a Google server on the google.com domain. And if they clicked a link in the content, that took them to a page on your actual site. So it would be a change in domain, and therefore the analytics would attribute that as a third-party referral rather than it's coming from an organic search where the person actually found it. There's now a fix for this uh, in Google Analytics using a technique called session stitching. Uh, you can find a link to instructions for implementing that in the article I wrote, and that's linked in the uh, notes for this episode below. So what about interactive content? That's another area where AMP used to have severe limitations. One big problem area uh, that that caused was for e-commerce sites, that depend on faceted navigation. However, today AMP has several built-in components, like AMP Bind, for example, that make interactivity uh, like faceted navigation really quite possible to implement. And the final AMP myth to bust? Ah, many felt that AMP offered an inferior user interface and experience. In fact, they referred to the pages as being stripped down. Because AMP is so simplified in order to increase speed, it didn't have the flexibility to format pages in a way that had all the features and look and feel of a site's responsive mobile uh, pages normally. However, here at Stone Temple, we proved it's possible to create custom AMP pages that look just like our great mobile responsive pages, yet retain the lightning fast speed that AMP is known for. It took some coding to create a tool that would scrape our WordPress pages and render them in validated AMP code, but the result was well worth it. Well, thanks, Eric. And I encourage you to read Eric's original article that we based this episode on. We'll link it in the episode notes and also include links to some other valuable AMP resources Eric has created. Okay, Adam, I guess that's about it for today's episode. Not so fast, Jamie. We have one more myth to bust. What's that? The myth that your beard is real. That ain't no myth. Let's put that to the test. Ah! So, uh, so much for that myth. Darn, how about the myth that that stupid hat makes you look cool? 